be witnessing a coup in Myanmar? Yeah, I think we're, that is absolutely clear. I, I don't know why people are uh, still being tentative about that. The Aung San Suu Kyi is, is under arrest. Not only her, but all the leaders of her party are under arrest. It's also pretty clear that the military has been rounding up student leaders. They've been rounding up what appears to be some human rights defenders and other activists. So I think we are already in a very serious and, and very uh, desperate situation. Who is behind this? This is a military coup. The military is very unhappy with the results of the democratic election, which they lost overwhelmingly. They're scared of anything that diminishes in any way their, their power, their control of the country. And so they've decided to sweep aside Aung San Suu Kyi, even though it should be said she has been an apologist for many of the abuses that they have committed in the past, including the genocide perpetrated against the Rohingya population in 2017. She stood in a court in The Hague at the International Court of Justice and defended them. Nevertheless, they're afraid of anything that diminishes their power. And now I guess they've decided she has to go. Did she know this was coming? Did the international community know it was coming? I think there's clearly been signals, not least of all over the weekend when the military sent tanks into the street, the military was seen, and a number of, of foreign embassies, including Canada, I believe, spoke out you know, saying that a coup would be disastrous, that it would be terrible. They were chastised by military authorities for being alarmist. But of course, literally, I think six or seven hours later, the military did indeed launch this coup. Is her life in danger? I think her life is potentially in danger. I hope not. I mean, even though I've criticized her here very publicly and in many other fora, you know, I call for her unconditional and immediate release. But I think the lives of anyone in Myanmar who stands up for democracy, who stands up for human rights, especially grassroots, you know, human rights activists who don't have the international reputation that she has and a a Nobel Peace Prize to, to hide behind, uh, they're very much at risk, and uh, our hearts really go out to them tonight. You mentioned that you're calling for her release. Uh, I should note that CBC News has reached out to our federal government through Global Affairs Canada to get reaction. What do you think the international reaction will be? I mean, I think this is what it, it should be and what it must be, and I think it's, it, it should be very strong. And I saw already that you're permanent representative uh, in New York at the UN. Uh, Bob Ray has already said something. I hope that Canada will come out very strongly against this coup, because I think the only way of defending people's lives, of saving the situation, of lowering the temperature in the country is precisely for the international community to increase the pressure on the military, to let them know that the whole world is watching, and to let them know that there will be consequences uh, for their actions. So what do you anticipate is going to happen? It's Monday morning. What's going to happen by Monday night? What's going to happen in the next few days? Well, I think the big unknown now, of course, is how the, the vast majority of the population inside Myanmar will react. You know, are we going to see people come out into the streets? I mean, in Myanmar, that is not an easy decision to make. That could be a, a very dangerous decision for people. But it'll be, you know, we'll have to see if people will come out, if people will protest what they're going to do about the fact that the military has, it appears, essentially deposed the government. Now, they haven't officially said that they've done that yet, but certainly everybody is under arrest. People have been rounded up and, and taken away. The phone lines have been cut. The internet is down. Nobody can reach anybody inside the country. And so people like myself, and I'm sure like you guys who have been reaching out to colleagues uh, inside the country, can't get hold of, of anybody. So I think the next 24 hours is going to be crucial. It's going to be crucial in terms of what the international community says, and it's going to be crucial, most importantly, in terms of what the people of Myanmar themselves say and do. What do you think in terms of instability in the country? Are we going to see a massive shutdown of civil liberties if the, if the military is taking over? Are we going to see riots in the streets? How serious is this going to get? I think it's a very dangerous and a very potentially deadly situation. We're talking about a military who have a long, long history of perpetrating atrocities against their own people. As I said, they've already committed a genocide against the Rohingya people in Rakhine State in 2017. They've been responsible for war crimes committed against armed ethnic groups in different parts of the country. They've been responsible for torture and crimes against humanity perpetrated in prisons against those who 
they've arbitrarily detained over many years, including student activists in the 1980s and into the 1990s. This is a military that has a lot of blood on its hands and in the past has not been afraid to use its armed might against its own people. So I think that's one of the reasons why as soon as this coup happened, people like me were not being alarmist, but being very, very alarmed about uh, the situation inside the country. Simon, 